Hi, my name is David Sloan and welcome back to the Cameraman Lectures. This is Lecture 8, addressing Cameraman Episodes 26 through 31 and the beginning of Season 3, The Hunt for Milo Harris. This lecture covers one of the largest sets of episodes that we cover in just one lecture. It includes the director, Reckoning, an interview with Emma Ginsberg, parts one and two, and Nancy at the Mine, and Wanderer. The reason for this vast coverage is partly because the revelations of season three come very fast compared to the very slow reveals of season two, and partly because uh, these episodes together just tell us a whole lot about Nancy. Uh, this lecture stops just short of the pivotal episodes, pivotal episodes 32 through 34, which we'll talk about in Lecture 9. In these episodes, the revelations about Nancy come almost as quickly as the revelations about the cameraman. From Nancy's perspective, we learn very quickly that prior to her recruitment by Director Karmazov, she worked for the FBI and had just completed an undercover mission in which she captured a dangerous individual named Marvin Butterfield. In early cameraman drafts, I gave an account of what happened <clears throat> just before she was drugged, but I cut it out because it was too long as a flashback and it slowed down the pace. The short version of that uh, account is that she was pretending undercover to be a representative of a domestic terrorist that was trying to buy a portal nu portable nuclear weapon that Marvin Butterfield had built and designed uh, uh, in Texas. In the course of this mission, she won Marvin's trust, which given Marvin's uh, extreme uh, paranoia was extremely hard to do. The objective of the mission was to find out if Marvin had any other buyers from other organizations that were wanting to buy his nuclear weapon. And in the course of that, she found out that he was actually planning to use the bomb himself to blow up the city of Austin. His plan was to plant the bomb in the city and then hide himself in this doomsday bunker that he had built for himself. And he was going to ride the fallout, uh, ride out the fallout of the nuclear war that he anticipated starting. Well, uh, Darius was privately being briefed about this mission because Marvin Butterfield met the criteria of being a threshold individual. Darius intervened and arranged for Marvin to be trapped instead of arrested or killed. Uh, the people uh, that were uh, hunting him down were able to find and disable the bomb without Marvin knowing about it. And they planted somebody inside of Marvin's bunker. And just as he closed the lid and pushed the button to trigger his bomb, they tranquilized him and transported him to Dora Mountain. And there they had turned his corridor into a perfect replica of his bunker, the place where he felt the most comfortable. And their plan was to gradually reintroduce themselves into his life and try to get him to use his tech to rebuild society you know try and use it for good in the course of setting this up nancy came to darius's attention and was deemed to be a person of interest so he had her drugged and brought to dura mountain with marvin when she found out about their plan to to take him away in the escape the very that occurred very quickly after both Marvin and Nancy showed up at Dura Mountain. Uh, Marvin uh, was freed along with Kevin Dane and Omer and another inmate named Kakano, who is this very zealous environmentalist terrorist uh, from Tonga. And it was Kakano who actually shot uh, and killed Darius and escaped with Marvin to California. And Together, they plotted to drop a bomb inside the San Andreas Fault and, and blow it up and start an earthquake. Uh, but they were both killed uh, and hunted down before they got too far into that plot. So, uh, a lot of that backstory was put aside uh, so that the narrative could focus on Nancy and her renewed interest in figuring out not only what happened during the escape, but also what happened to Omer and, the cam and what the cameraman could be up to and what happened to Milo. 
Uh, she's determined to discover the truth regardless of the support of Baker and his military team, or lack thereof. Uh, the team ultimately abandons her at Dura Mountain and just leaves her to her own devices. Uh, and they do this when they discover just how wrong her stated narrative of the cameraman turned out to be. By the end of the episode, we've learned that Talia's really real name is Emma Ginsberg, and that she was a technician at Dura Mountain uh, during the time of Darius Karmazov, and she was convinced to become a confidant and a collaborator of Kevin Dane, and later she became his right hand. This backstory helps explain her fierce commitment to Kevin because she was one of the few in the world who actually knew his true identity and personality and liked it. You may recall that uh, I, when I was talking about Dura Mountain, I said that Dura Mountain originally started as an Arkham Asylum story. And the embryonic seeds of who Talia turned out to be can be found in the story of Harley Quinn, the Arkham psychologist who falls for the Joker. I used to watch Batman the Animated Series as a kid, and I'd say it was formative. Uh, Emma admits to knowing about the escape, holding on to Kevin's computer uh, because he asked her to keep it safe, and her intention to meet up with Kevin at the abandoned site at the mine. Ultimately, she gets taken away by Baker, but we'll discover later on if Emma's devotion to Kevin Dane is going to be rewarded. We also watch in the course of these episodes as they discover that Darius is dead, that Kevin is the real cameraman, and that Kevin's wife, Lacey, does not actually have Alzheimer's, all of which casts very serious doubt about the judgment of Nancy. As we watch her, <clears throat> we suspect that her hunt for Milo is now not only about closing out unfinished business from the past, but about reclaiming her reputation and, and her personal pride. That said, there may be a few more things that we need to learn about Nancy before we can accurate, accurately assess her motivations. The clue that takes Nancy to Roanoke, with a little help from Ed Dickerson's and the, and the locals, was the name Scaparelli. Astronomy nerds will have immediately picked up on that famous name, which will be addressed uh, during next season in another uh, episode. For now, uh, we're along for the ride as Nancy makes her way independently, determined to carry out her mission alone. The event that will happen next, in the next couple of episodes, is another pivotal one that will push these characters in entirely new directions. So, keep your eyes open. You never know what you're going to see.